Well, it's time for the Texas Bucket List Bite of the Week, and this week we came down to Galveston to get some seafood at a place with one gigantic crab. We're at Gaidos. When it comes to playing in the surf and sun of Galveston Island, one eventually has to find time for some seafood. For a lot of folks, that stop is Gaidos. We absolutely love the seafood. You know the service is going to be good. You know the food is going to be good. I hold our restaurant is one of the best in Galveston. Nick Guido is the fourth generation of G-men that have operated this family restaurant that's been a part of Galveston Island since 1911. Growing up, I, I never really thought about it. To us, it was just kind of the family restaurant. Nick's great-grandfather, San Jacinto Guido, opened the doors to the restaurant when it was originally part of the Murdoch's bathhouse. In the 1930s, they situated the restaurant on the side of the seawall and have never left. It's, it's actually pretty crazy. I, I've never been to a restaurant that's been here for this long and to have seafood um, that fresh um, being served for that long and it's just a great place to come. Love it. Well, we've been coming since 1970, off and on. The key to keeping customers hooked? Consistency. We love seafood. Oysters, red snapper, shrimp. What else did we get the last time we were here? You guys have just kind of stuck to what you know, like making seafood. Yes, I mean, my, my grandfather and my dad, you know, taught me the expression, find out what the guest wants and then serve it. That the same cup of bisque that you're eating today is the same recipe and procedure that was made 60 years ago. Being a guido, Nick wasn't a big fish when he got caught up in the family business. He had to learn things from the sea floor to the surface, and that all started when he was a boy. Uh, my first summer I was 12 years old, uh, peeling shrimp, washing dishes, so I've spent a lot of you know, weekends and spring breaks and summertime here. With so much history and lore here, there's one Texas-sized tale I wanted to try to reel in. The blue crab on top of the roof that says Cotton Galveston. I mean, come on, people yeah. really believe that thing? We get phone calls about it. Yeah, you'd be surprised, but we get phone calls <laughs> about it. <laughs> and, really uh, but I'm sticking to my story. It was Cotton Galveston Bay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to that. We <laughs> haven't had anybody uh, try to tell us otherwise. <laughs> Considering just about everything served here is caught out of the Gulf, I'll allow it. Keeping things fresh is what's kept Guido such a go-to on Galveston for so long, and I was ready to get a taste. So Nick first got things started on their Oyster Deluxe combination, a dish that features all their famous oyster preparations. These are all sauces that we make here in-house. All right, so we throw this in the oven? Yes, sir. As those doesn't bake, Nick prepares a few oyster brochette. What else is better to cook oysters in than bacon fat? <laughs> and then a few fried oysters. Those are some big oysters. These are some monsters right here. Look at that. That is a huge. As the oysters took a bath in the hot oil, this station always brings back memories for Nick. I worked the station when I was 12 years old. This is your place. They didn't let me fry, but I was could stick shrimp and yeah. bread. Yeah, 12 years old. So does this give you nightmares still in? It happens to all of us. My dad, my uncle tell me stories where you you wake up. You know, from a from a nightmare of you know being in the weeds, you got tickets to the floor or something. So yeah, <laughs> those nightmares disappear when fried oysters come up from the deep. Look at that, they look like hash browns. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Nick puts the massive amount of mollusks on a dish, and we start on the red snapper. They were cutting this snapper here at the bar this morning. Wonderful. That's fresh snapper. We know. Very fresh. After being seasoned with a Parmesan crust, a little bit of butter is put in a pan to saute the snapper. All right, cooking light today. This, yeah. <laughs> Once finished, a Burblong sauce is added with jumbo lump crab meat on top. Those are some uh, serious chunks of crab meat there. Oh, yeah. Those must come from the blue crab on the roof. That's right. <laughs> we're still we're still working still on working it. Still working on it. Yeah, still dividing it up. Once the fish finishes up, Nick plates it up. And I'm ready for a meal featuring the spoils of the sea. Well, with a deluxe combination platter, it's safe to say we are uh, eating like a king down in Galveston. First up, a dozen oysters with six different sauces, Asiago style being my first bite. The richness of that Asiago with that oyster, very good. Then baked, which combines butter and cracker crumbs. A wonderful oyster with a delicate finish. That's very good. We do love the oysters. On to the beanville, shrimp, mushroom, onions, white wine, seasoned breadcrumbs, cayenne pepper, and Parmesan cheese. There's a whole lot going on in this one. So much stuff on this, I can't even get it on my fork. Very neat flavor. The Monterey has shrimp, cream, sherry, and cheddar cheese. That is like old school oyster flavor right there. 
Sherry and oysters, man. <laughs> and then the ponzini. Mushrooms, Swiss, Parmesan cheese, and cream sauce. Ooh, that one might be my favorite. Creamy, rich, just super delicious. That just might be the tastiest scheme I've ever been a part of. Finally, the go-to baked oyster, the Rockefeller, which does have a hint of jalapeno. Amazing. Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Might as well eat a fried one. No, that's not a mutton oyster. That's a real oyster. And finally, a little bit easier work with the uh, oyster brochette. Great bacon flavor on that one. On to the fish. Well, the beurre blanc sauce just comes off that fish and tastes sensational. The snapper's wonderful. One of my favorite dishes. Well, if you're looking for a great place to take a date down on Galveston Island, just guide her on over to Guido's because it's well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. It's a perfect way to end uh, a day is enjoying great fresh seafood. You need to come down and experience the Gulf. You need to see the water. You need to enjoy this experience and go back home and appreciate where you've been.